Earlier today, I did an interview with William Ray, who is an independent journalist and veteran up in Nova Scotia, Canada. He wrote an article which featured certain radical trans activists, the same who got Megan Murphy banned from Twitter and who have been trying to cancel her speaking engagements. Now, during this interview, which was about how identity politics has infiltrated the left and is basically taking it apart from the inside out, during this interview, his Medium article got taken down by Medium, and then later on today, his Twitter was suspended. Now, I haven't gone through all of his Twitter, so I don't know the offending tweet, but I think it's absolutely abhorrent that another person who is a free thinker, who is a journalist, who you'll see in this interview, is being shoved off of these platforms by people who are very suspicious. I'm not going to name their names right now. I'm going to look into them and try to present all the evidence that I have, but they don't seem like wholesome characters. So here's the interview with William Ray, who insofar as I know, this is the last thing that's going to exist of this man on the internet, if certain people have their way. We get into a lot of the different issues, and I hope that this kind of quells some of the criticism that I've been receiving for not covering the right, or betraying the left, or being a shill for, you know, certain sorts of people on this side or on that side. I'm not a shill. I'm just somebody who is interested in discussion, but this isn't about me. This is about William. Here you go. I just stumbled on your, uh, your Quillette article about the knapsack. What's her name's knapsack, which I find over and over again referenced, and it was good to like read Peggy. your breakdown of her. Peggy, yeah. McIntosh? McIn or... Peggy McIntosh, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I know. I, what stuns me is that it took some grumpy vet on his couch with a computer to figure this out. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? The first thing I did, it was a first person essay, right? So the first thing I'm thinking is, okay, well, who the hell are you? Yeah. So, oh, yeah, then I, I simply went, uh, I mean, her maiden name was on her Wikipedia. That got me to this marriage announcement from 1964 in the New York Times, mm -hmm. same page as the Vanderbilts and stuff, and uh, that led me to her daddy, and voila. <laughs> but why no academic ever thought, oh, you know, personal experience essay, maybe I should see who this person is. Yeah, well, even if they knew, they would completely ignore that, because the only academics who are uh, pushing that essay are ones that want you to believe in the essay. I haven't seen any critiques of that essay or that brought up in, in the uh, in the context of a critique. But, you know, that's just right. what I've seen. Mm. You brought up... That, that article br brings up that Peggy McIntosh is... Uh, she's using white privilege to uh, excuse her class privilege. Sure, yeah. Or cover it, sure. As or, cover or, for her class. Yeah, and you make some very strong statements about identity politics and how identity politics leads to violence. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I was a Canadian peacekeeper in the former Yugoslav republics mm -hmm. in uh, 1992 so that's exactly what it was. And there's, you know, there's a, a boatload of academic work written on the Balkans. And yeah, so you had a society that functioned pretty well for about 50 years, considering it's a country that we sort of slapped together after World War One. Okay, yeah. Um, it functioned pretty well. Now, there's a lot of talk about the cult of personality of Tito and all this, but from talking to the people who actually lived there, it wasn't all about that. They just, you know, they worked out their issues, they got along, they had common interests. Um, and really, it was in the, the mid to late 80s when uh, Milosevic and uh, mm -hmm. Tujman in Croatia started agitating. They used identity politics. They, you know, and, and it was exactly the way it is now where mm -hmm. it came into the schools. Yes. That's a very important point is they put it in the universities, the state-controlled universities, the state-controlled elementary schools. Yeah. Which also, by the way, Serb kids in elementary school learn how to strip and assemble an AK-47. 
Oh. <laughs> we found a 13-year-old. He could do this shit in, like, I think 17 seconds flat. Huh. Wow. So uh, re- really good with guns and really afraid of somebody who has a slightly different well, race. Exactly. Point. So you, when you introduce this to school children and you raise them from young ages and then when they go to university, the figures of authority tell them these people are stealing from you. These people are robbing from you. And the narrative was very much the same. Like, we would regularly talk to people on either side of the conflict. And, you know, sometimes when you had a personal moment, you'd kind of be like, what the fuck, dude? Hmm. Like, what are you doing? You know, it's mm-hmm. a beautiful, why are you killing each other? Yeah, you know? absolutely. Um, and they would have this, and they would, all of the narratives would be strikingly similar. Mm-hmm. Right? It was, it was like it was cut and paste, and they learned mm-hmm. it in school. And, you know, so these are people, so this started, I guess, in the, the early 80s. So these are people, they started with these guys when they were about 10. So by the time they're in their mid-20s, they're ready to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, was that centralized? Uh, was there, like, a central authority that was putting that in there by design? In- well, it was a former communist country, right? So okay. it was very state-run. It was it was a very top-down place. Okay. So yeah, in both instances, um, they used that system. So yes, directly the Croatian government just went in and changed the curriculum, much like is happening all across Canada right yeah. now. Yeah. Well, what's behind the change in Canada? Because it seems it appears to be mm-hmm. emergent like it's just a, a bunch of voluntarily you know activated uh you know administrators and teachers that are putting this into place no there... no no well it depends on what subject now if we're talking about the identity politics it's um it's simply a sea change in the universities up until the 60s universities were very conservative very white places mm-hmm. yada yada 60s 70s 80s you know they they swing and this happens a lot. They swing a little too far the other way. So now you've literally got Marxist-driven conflict um, yeah, yeah. theory pushing uh, things like the really misnamed gender studies. Women really need to take back women's studies and kick these guys out. Because it's nothing uh, about gender or anything else. It's about this, this active revolutionary te- uh, theology. Yeah. And it goes across the white privilege and the trans thing and everything. Because at base, what this says is you want to destabilize society. Uh, for for the purpose of restabilizing it in a better, more just way, right? Well, exactly. It, well, Marxism is an active revolutionary fucking doctrine. Hmm. Karl Marx wasn't right. I mean, he didn't write a critique on capitalism. He wrote the playbook on how to take it down, he figured. Yeah, and that's all of this. It's active. You don't just talk yeah. to people about it. You actively put this into. So you've got a generation, and and I think it it pays to remember because people like me, maybe like you, sort of classic liberals right now, are coming out of the woodwork and going, you know, you kids are fucked and what the hell. <laughs> but I think we need to remember that the people that are in their mid twenties now and stuff were children. And one of their first interactions with the world were the events in New York City and yes. Washington, D.C. on September 11th. Yes. And everything that came after, the lies, the war, the beheading videos. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the NSA, guys, the, the tightening of the authority over privacy, the advancement sure, of the Sure, the Patriot Act. They've grown up with the Patriot Act, Bill C-51, yeah. uh, you know, terrorist attacks everywhere. Um, they've also grown up without, you know, like the narrative once YouTube and Facebook and all this, the, 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 the information became very bubbled. You see what you want to see for the, you know, mm-hmm. for the, for like before you would buy either the national post or the Globe and mail. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, here in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, was, yeah. I mean, it was Canadian right wing you know, yeah. and left wing. Um, but now, you know, like, at least you were exposed to the opinions, other opinions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now you can live your whole, these kids live their whole life and they they sort out their social media. So they only ever hear other people saying, yeah, you're right. You're yeah. brave. You're- or look at how wrong that person is. Yeah, look at that. Oh, that fascist bastard. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. 
Um, so yeah, and it it has direct damaging. You know the whole the whole like my I started uh, with uh, video journalism in Quebec during the student strike. Uh, what year was that? About 2012. So this thing okay. was huge. There were huge clashes on the street. Went on for about a year and a half. Like thousands of riot police kicking the shit out of these kids. Okay. Um. So Quebec something to do with its culture it's the French part of Canada I guess yeah. you're aware um, so besides poutine they they really have a very strong social protest history that yeah. has to do with their separatism and stuff I guess but mm -hmm. like the government the provincial government does something there they don't like or the federal government man the next day there will be 30,000 union members on the street okay. screw you Okay. Right, and yeah. the unions were very powerful in Quebec. So, you know, the the student strike. At one point, the government of Quebec bought in a law that basically said if if more than five people got together, you had to give an itinerary to the police, huh. or you were illegal demonstration and could be detained. Okay. Um. So, like that night, over three hundred thousand people, the a big chunk of the population of Montreal, descended into the streets banging pots together and going hey fuck you okay so that's the kind of social power that existed in quebec now they just had the g7 there in quebec city a few months back mm -hmm. they could barely muster 500 protesters okay their, their protest was completely ineffective the unions didn't even take the street and now the reason for that is this identity politic radicalization came out of a fellow named jaggy singh and something called QPIRG and the CLAC. But what they did, and they said this online, they had a manifesto, they said, we are gonna take over the social movements. We are gonna get on the streets and whatever they want, we are going to make them revolutionary. <laughs> We're gonna be violent, we're gonna attack the cops. So they got this uh, you know, black blocked up kids, started calling themselves the Antifa after yeah. you guys elected Trump. Yeah. I'm like, you realize that he's a president of the U.S. <laughs> okay, they used to have Richard fucking Nixon. I mean, listen to about half an hour of the Nixon tapes. I'll take Trump any day. Huh. Huh. <laughs> that guy was yeah. full on nuts. Yeah. You know, yeah. So anyway, they, they, you know, like, uh, this guy basically used university money for a university student group. He trained and then transported the Antifa up to Quebec City because some nationalist group was having a protest. Mm -hmm. Now, nationalism in Quebec has a very different flavor than in the States or English Canada. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? These people have been marching for 50 years with Quebec flags, right? Okay. It's, not taken in the, it's not taken in the same way like a white supremacist thing or something. Yeah, Never yeah, happened. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So they go up there, these kids. They end up kicking the living shit out of three or four senior citizens. Hmm. They had a big group. There was about five, six hundred. They beat the shit out of the press, beat the shit out of a bunch of people. And then they started, yeah, they took over every demonstration. You wanted to have a march, these guys would show up and turn it into a shit show. About when was this? This yeah. all happened in December 2016. So in de December, up until 2014, Okay. And I can send you videos all this because I used okay. to cover it. Like okay. big, strong social movements. Yeah, okay. 2015, this group launches, they call themselves Antifa. They launch a website called Montreal Counter Info. And if you read through this thing, they got bloody uh, recipes for Molotov cocktails. They got, okay. and this is where they put this manifesto up, says we're going to take over. Uh, now, me uh, and my partner actually went to a demo in December 2016 where they did exactly that. We did. We went down. We didn't recognize this. We'd been covering demos in this city for four hmm. or five years. It was all like black blocked up. These kids are whipping firecrackers at people's houses right away. And, hmm. You know, they're looking for a fight. Yeah, and they got one. Now, is this... Is this Jaggy Singh? Do you think he's like an operative for the globalists in a way? I mean, it seems like identity I'm politics really, I'm, throws I'm a wrench sure into. At base, he could just be a pretty arrogant guy who, because okay. of circumstances, right. is okay. viewed as a leader. And he, okay. he you know, he seem, he likes TV cameras. I know that. Other yeah. than that, I can't say. 
But you can you can look him up. He's quite well known in Canada. You can find uh, detailed background uh, on him. He mm-hmm. he has always uh, portrayed himself as an anti globalization demonstrator. Mm-hmm. But it seems like but, identity politics is throwing a wrench into class uh, politics. Well, and isn't that, you know, like, if you want people not to pay attention to the growing wealth gap and all this shit, yeah. like, my view of it is this, is in, you know, after uh, the Iraq wars and the, the bank fiasco in 2008, yeah, I was part of Occupy Montreal. We camped downtown. Worst camp and trip of my fucking life, boy. But, um, <laughs> I can imagine. Oh, it was just bloody awful. But... Um, we occupied 1,900 cities in the in in the G7, G20 countries okay. simultaneously, and we were communicating. That okay. has never happened in human history before. Yeah. People were rising up all over the globe, mm-hmm. um, and it was very unified. You know, like when I was at Occupy, we had middle class motherfuckers down there camping with us. We mm-hmm. had people coming out of office buildings in suits dropping piles of cash on us. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, like, I mean, I, I won't get into where that went, but so, mm-hmm. you know, the desire was there. It was across classes, across, you know, color, all that stuff. And now fast forward to now, what do we got? We got fucking nothing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. You couldn't organize a, a 12 person uh, anti-war meeting. Yeah. So and- whose interest does that serve? Yeah, you you brought that up in your article on Macintosh about how identity politics um, it splinters any and every social group. Well, you know, and I'm I you know I don't want to. I certainly I have no basis to yeah. to believe that there is an actor behind it. But yeah, if we look at history, if you actually look at Cointel Pro. And what it actually did and what it was meant to do, it started in the 50s against the communists. Mm-hmm. And the purpose of it wasn't necessarily to send in spies and, and record shit and arrest people. If you read the actual documents, the purpose was to sow dissent in the organizations, to rip them apart. And that's actually how they took out the Panthers. Mm. They started the feud between Newton's bunch and... Um, huh. Uh, the other fella, that, 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 was Seal, Bobby Seals. There was a fracture between the Newton group and Bobby Seals. They actually would write, get handwriting guys to write letters in the handwriting of, hmm. of other Panthers and mail it in those days. And so they'd get this letter saying, hey, fuck you, you know, you're not, you don't represent the revolution. If you come down here, we'll put, you know, shoot your ass. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, you know. It, yeah. It's worked perfectly. Whether there's someone behind it, I don't know. But it's worked beautifully yeah. because everything's fractured, and I don't see it coming back together. Well, yeah. It's, what's what's the antidote he, to it, then, to identity politics? Well, it's so ingrained, though. Yeah. I mean, a whole generation of of like, okay, so I'm in Canada now. Not perfect. We have a terrible history with the indigenous people, mm-hmm. but generally on race in the last. 40 50 years you know we're voted like best place to live in the world hmm. okay. and one of the reasons is consistently our multicultural like we don't have big you know or or didn't have huge race problems up here yeah. uh-huh. um again minus the indigenous population which is goes beyond race i mean we're it's about territory with those fellas mm-hmm. um but now, you know, and you used to, when you went to a social movement type thing here, I mean, it was a, you know, g- breakfast of whoever, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Not so much anymore, right? And think about it. I mean, Jesus, if you're a white guy, you're walking in there, well, you're guilty of this, that, the other thing. Mm-hmm. You've got, it seems, yeah. the worst actors using identity yeah. politics yeah. to come to the front. Yeah. So, you know, look at the Women's March. That started off as a great thing after Trump was elected. Women felt threatened. Yeah. You know, they got, and that was seen around the world. You know, people saw the women in the States get on the street and go, hey, fuck you, buddy. Mm-hmm. Um, again, but then when it shakes out, the, years, the thing's blown up because who went to the front of it? People that got there on identity politics. They yeah. got to leadership positions because they were black, because they were kind of Muslim. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. It seems like the what identity politics does is 
it raises the the worst possible actors to the front, and they get yeah, power really quickly. Um, yeah. And that, but they turn out to be inevitably short sighted. Uh, these sure. these actors, they're short sighted. They're not good at building coalitions because, like, their well, entire way yeah. of getting power is by division. So it ends up serving a, a long a long a longer view who doesn't like the movement. All you have to do is position those bad actors to get to the front and then that will completely yep. short circuit the the movement absolutely i agree um uh, the only problem is is that it, it seems pretty conspiracy theory to to posit like like some sort of intentional that's what i'm saying effort. i've got nothing to back that i'm yeah. saying that the results are damn perfect now it doesn't have to be some grand conspiracy. Like it or not, I mean, there were a lot of very Marxist-minded professors in the universities. Mm -hmm. yeah. So over the years, they hired people like them. Yeah. So you, you got this unification of thought. Yeah. That the only way forward, and especially after nine one one and the wars, I mean, it took a hard left turn. Yeah. Um, so these people want to advance this, and they've said openly, you know, at different times that, you know, part of the reason we're here is because we get access to the children of the rich. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they have thrown away any kind of academic credibility because, I mean, I meet kids. I, there was a kid I met in the student strike. He's a poli-sci major. Mm -hmm. So I asked him, I said, uh, you know, like, uh, Rome, Egypt, Greece, put those in order. Nope. Oh, wait, really? Not at all. Like historically, like their empires? Yeah, not at all. Couldn't do it. <laughs> oh, no. He's sitting there trying to, oh, okay, well, let me see here. Uh, Cleopatra, uh, not a clue. <laughs> oh, geez. Huh. Well, yeah. Why would he? I, because that's not what he learns. He learns about intersection. He learns about yeah. white earth, you know, and it's, they have taken over yeah. the fucking arts. Forget yeah. about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Trump went to STEM. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And they're, they're slowly taking over STEM, too. But yep. the thing is, we need to figure out solutions to this. Like, have, well, have you? Oh. Well, no, I mean, like everybody, like the people who want to preserve well, it's, culture. It's happening. The biggest the first thing that needs to happen is people need to have the balls to speak to fuck up. Okay. And it's hard sometimes. Like I wrote about the Antifa right after they pulled that crap in Quebec City. Mm -hmm. And uh you know, I was living right outside Montreal, and, you know, mm -hmm. um, these guys called to violence openly. Now, most of them are goofs, so they'll never yeah. do it, but still. Yeah. Um, so it takes people speaking up. It takes people willing to be called a racist, willing to be called a transphobe, willing to yeah. whatever. Um, yeah. With some of the issues, I mean, the problem, too, is, I mean, me, I'm bulletproof. I'm a, I, I, my living comes mostly from my Canadian veterans' pensions. Okay. So I'm bulletproof. You can't get me fired. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I, I run my own little media thing. Now I have stuff in print in a couple of national newspapers <laughs> and this sort of thing in Quillette. But you can't fire me. You know, you can't. Yeah. You talk to my boss. I'm I'm him. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. That's kind of unique. Yeah. And you until know, the censors like, come after you. People like me and you are going to have to step up because... Well, the thing is, is that what you wrote in the article... Um, the, your recent article about the uh, I, I can't remember his name Crute or somebody who is yeah 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 like, Haley Heartless yeah Haley Heartless so and Mer Megan Murphy was talking about him her uh, mm. or he who shall not be gendered um, in, <laughs> in our article and, and Megan Murphy was saying that she was basically run off Twitter and run yeah. out of a lot of programs by these radical activists and so. Yeah. The problem with us as independent media makers is that we rely on a centralized or decentralized media outlets to, you know, Twitter and YouTube to connect us with an audience. Like, we cannot connect to the audience on our own. So what happens when the, the means by which we connect to our audience is now infected by these filters? We're going to have to get creative. Huh. You have to use other people. You have to use fake accounts. We have to get creative. That's hmm. it. Hmm. Uh, um kind of revolutionary you know, for then me, it's like busting through jamming when i used to be a signaler in the artillery it's like breaking through jamming okay right yeah. um yeah well, no i i totally i mean that's why i wrote the article because what i'm saying is that we have turned the public sphere completely over 
to these private companies. Yeah. But yeah. we don't fucking talk to each other anymore. Even a goddamn bus stop. And I'm staring at their damn phones, yo. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. the only place we intersect that we talk about the issues of the day are in these public forums and they are controlled by these things. And yeah, like, you know, when they decide to look at how efficient this is. That other fella in BC, the little piece of garbage that tweets out about uh, helping 10 year olds with tampons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, Jesus Christ, 10 years ago, you forward that the RCMP, they'd have them in hand, boy. Yeah. Now it's, oh, it's a trans woman discovering. Go fuck yourself. Hmm. And this, he didn't even put any effort. No. He dressed yeah. like a man. He looked like a man. Once in a while, he throw on some lipstick and wear a pink hat. Go fuck yourself. Hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so odd, and they are just defending the shit out of them. But behind some of this crap is, is a hint of pedophilia, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, I've got an article coming out soon because, yeah, like you're legally making children able to consent to things <laughs> that have to do with their sexuality. Yeah, yeah. Not that big a step. And, I mean, the guy that designed uh, in Ontario, the guy that wrote this, curriculum that has the gender bread man and kids mm -hmm. learn about like unassociated shit like anal sex they're talking about in grade three four mm -hmm. right because it's you know sex pause and they're getting this material straight from these huge charity groups mm -hmm. in ontario it's a gal in bc it's arc right okay so these groups make the curriculum just hand it to the teachers federation and in it goes mm -hmm. we're inclusive yeah. Um, it's got wholly age inappropriate shit. Shit that got nothing to do with gender, mm -hmm. right? Um, and mm -hmm. the idea too with Lisa Littman's study, you're about you know, rapid onset gender dysphoria. Yeah, like yeah. at one level, you're basically you're lining up patients because you're telling kids, oh, maybe you've got a little girl hidden in you. Well, kids, I mean, they're children. Yeah. Right? I used to think I was a pirate when I was a little kid. Pretty fucking <laughs> happy somebody didn't put my fucking eye out. Yeah, you know, right. My fucking identity. Huh. Right? We got 18-year-old girls. I talked to a lady this morning. Her fucking 20-year-old daughter had a radical double mastectomy. Yeah. You ever seen? Have you ever seen what a fallow whatever the fuck looks like? A what? It's called phalloplasty. It's where they build oh, a penis for yeah. a transgender man. You yeah. see what they do to their arm? It's like skinning somebody. Okay. Huh. Oh, you should Google this, my friend. They skin okay. mm -hmm. the forearm of this person. Skin it. Yeah. And then, uh, that's what they use for the thing. Huh. What the? Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. And the thing is, if there's clusters, it's not a natural phenomenon. Yeah. Any okay. first year fucking any science student knows that. Yeah. And, and right. by clusters, you mean like uh, gr social groups uh, all deciding that they're trans? Any, any science, buddy, any science. You go ahead, you ask a biologist, a, a physicist, anybody. If you're a biologist and you're studying a, a elk population, yeah. if you have a disease in a cluster, then it's not a natural onset disease. It's a goddamn environmental factor. Yeah, yeah. The moment that there was any indication this could be environmental, this should have stopped dead across North America. Yeah. Any other type of treatment, cancer treatment, if this sort of result came up, boom. Yeah. But it, it's, it's uh, it, because of the diversity initiatives, it's now <laughs> basically illegal to question or exactly. to be critical or to think critically well, about this. I mean, this is how Jordan Peterson became a famous guy. Yeah. I mean, he's a grumpy prick psych professor from Toronto, <laughs> right? But he he became world famous, be, and he was dead right. Whether yeah. you agree with his goddamn determinism shit or yeah. not, he was dead right on this. Yeah. Because he got in front of the Canadian Senate, and he said, you are legislating speech. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, 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 no. Yep. Megan you Murphy know. was there, too. Yeah, Megan Murphy testified as well, and yeah. uh, even some trans folk testified. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot, a couple of other women's groups too, and um, mm -hmm. you know it was just rode over. Like if you watch the actual footage, you got these senators just, oh, you, you're a transphobe, you're a whatever. Mm -hmm. Shut up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now and I found here's a little interesting tidbit. I found yeah. now there's a lot of big, big, big money here. 
Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I, right. I interviewed someone from EGAL, the huge charity in Ontario that that uh, backs a lot of this across Canada. Um, so these guys started in the 80s as a straight up uh, gay advocacy group. During the uh, okay. sort of late 90s, early 2000s, they were uh, up in the uh, gay marriage fight. Okay. Yeah. So we legalized that in. Uh, well, I mean, they recognized it for civil servants and stuff back in the 90s, but we fully legalized, I think, only in 2010. Okay. I might be wrong. You'd have to check. But so I talked to this person from a gal. Now, what they told me was that they were almost ready to shut the doors after that. Okay. Because right? they've they, fulfilled their they won. charter. And yeah. I mean, you know, like a, a gay, it's pretty integrated. Yeah. Right. I mean, we never, I, anyway, I mean, even, I'm 50 years old, I went to high school in Edmonton, Alberta, right? Northern frickin' Alberta, same place they found Wolverine. Okay. okay. <laughs> I had gay people in my high school, nobody gave a fuck, <laughs> they weren't beat up, they, you know, okay. I don't know if everybody was super nice to them, but, okay. you know, um, so yeah, like, uh, so what this lady told me, they were almost going to shut the doors. Then in 2012, 13, they get a new director and a flood of money starts coming in. Mm -hmm. A lot of it in their case came straight from the liberal government of the province of Ontario run by a woman named Kathleen Wynne, W-Y-N-N-E. So to the tune of about $3 million by 2016, 17. They started okay. off with a million point five. Okay. Now at that time we had a conservative Harper government so here, I don't know if you, if you know how it works, but in each province, there's like liberals and conservatives. Then there's the federal versions of the party. Okay. Our election laws say that the provincial and the federal, they can't give money to each other. Okay. Right? right. Okay. So what happens is the wind government hands over uh, like a mill five a year, starting at a mill five a year, over to a gal, and starting in 2013-14. 2014, 15, 16, leading up to our last federal election, a gal is handing over a couple of million dollars to the federal liberals, who then oh. immediately, when they get in power, in Ontario, the Win liberals had put in changes to the Human Rights Act. They were the first in Canada to do that with this diversity stuff that you're talking about. That's how they've done it here, through okay. provincial human rights. So as soon as the Trudeau Liberals get in, they copy they copy paste this legislation federally and call it Bill C sixteen, and that's what you see okay. uh, Peterson and uh, Murphy testifying against. Okay. But okay. it's copy paste legislation. Okay. When government got it from Miguel, so literally they wrote the legislation that is now federal. Huh. The other thing of note is that. Um, so a gal developed a gal with the Ontario Education Board developed this uh, curriculum that Doug Ford just took out that people had a problem with because it's all this, you know, anal sex in grade three and you might really be a boy. Yeah. Um, the guy who developed this, whose name is skipping my head at the moment, but I can look it up. It's in my uh, article, the the one on the trans, uh, the Tranish Inquisition. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who wrote the curriculum was subsequently convicted for guess what? Come on. P.E.D. Yeah. Okay. Are you fucking kidding me? The huh. guy that wrote it was convicted of like multiple fucking counts. Huh. Wow. He's out on parole now. And this was back in like 2015 or so. He's out on parole now. And he's still tweeting out like, you know, oh, pedophilia is a, a sexual. You like he's unrepentant. Okay. Okay. Right? It's not like, oh, I had a problem. No, no, no. Okay. All right. And and here, huh. like in the mainstream media, you can't even question that. Somebody wrote one mainstream article saying, hey, wait a minute now. Kind of normal. And uh, they hmm. were pilloried. Really? By? Oh, complaints made to the fucking, uh, you know, journalistic organizations and, and uh, oh, yeah, human rights board. <laughs> oh, boy. I read an article or I, I watched a video that the Trudeau government is legislating like $500 million to trusted news outlets. Oh, yeah, out. that's cute, eh? 
So, so do you have any uh, insider or Canadian knowledge of this? Because sure. Well, I mean, what he's is doing that different is, than is what he's... was before? Because there was subsidized media in Canada. Sure, sure, and they get priority through the CRTC and stuff like that. Because we live beside you guys, and we'd get just you know we'd be buried. Fuck. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah, well, that's basically what a lot of it's for, because we're right beside you guys. So to have our own kind of media industry, okay. they have to put walls up. So, yeah, there's subsidies like uh, CBC is a wholly government operation. Okay. Um, but, what? yeah, what he's done is he's, he's there saying, well, you know, the traditional mainstream print, and we've got all this fake news from guys like us. And uh, yeah. so, yeah, so they're handing out $500 million. And at the same time, now this is kind of connected. The biggest union that has journalists up here is called Uni4. Okay. U-N-I-F-O-R. So at the same time, he's giving out this uh, $500 million. Um, Unifor starts a campaign saying that they are going to spend the next year campaigning against the Conservative Party of Canada. Wait, uh, a, a yeah, journalist well, union? Yes, 20,000 journalists for most of our mainstream are all members of Unifor. And it's not like, it's normal here. Normally the unions support the NDP. You know who they are, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Democratic Party, Tommy yeah. Douglas, which is uh, Kiefer Sutherland's granddad. Okay. Yeah, so uh, unions, it's just pro-force. They support the NDP because they're the most left party. So that's fine. We're, but to come out and say you're going to go against one party. Oh, that's okay. not, and especially given, and a lot of the journalists up here, Worthington, a lot of those guys are, you know, they're tweeting out and stuff and go, what the hell? What okay. do you do? You right. can't do this. Right? You can support the NDP. Okay, great. Just because yeah. I'm, you know, maybe a conservative or whatever, that's fine. But you cannot say we're going to go against yeah, one party. Yeah. yeah. And at that's the same time, he's given this money. So he, this is all geared for the election next year because his, even the polls aren't really all that correct. We just had Quebec go right wing, Ontario right wing. Yeah. There was just a by-election. The Liberals got their ass handed to them, okay. and the polls didn't say it was going to happen. Okay. Much yeah. like you guys with Trump. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so, so the, yeah. the, oh, the journalist okay. union is officially turning into a propaganda a propaganda yeah, arm. Then. Links to this. I'll send you links to their okay. tweets and stuff about this. But yeah, they're they're because yeah, I mean they're going against the conservatives. Okay. They they didn't say they're going to support anybody, but one assumes the NDP. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe not. Maybe they're going to go liberal. Um, but yeah, like Trudeau is basically pissed off everybody up here. Right, he bought a pipeline, so there go the environmentalists. Okay, he's you know he wants to I don't know just like let tons of Americans who don't like America walk across the border. People are not cool with that. Okay, um, yeah, so he's pissed off everybody, and he's very concerned. They're very concerned about the next election. They are worried that, and they should be that it'll swing right. I think it will. Mm -hmm. Because the other knock-on effect of this goddamn identity politics crap, the trans thing, and everything. Like, I voted NDP all my life. Even when I was a soldier, I voted New Democratic Party. Because okay. I've, I've always been for, yeah, like, you know, income distribution, yada, yada. I can't, I can't vote for them, right? Because they're supporting this identity thing. I've got a young child about to go into school. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah. Um, and I'm not going to support you if you're going to say racist shit. Mm -hmm. Right? You're going to mm -hmm. go on about white privilege and that? Are you kidding? Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and in general, I think a lot of people, if you're not one of these hardcore SJWs, a lot of the center is going right. Because it's, you know, Megan Murphy herself just wrote an article and, yeah. you know, said basically, you know, shit. Yeah. yeah. I, I can't say that, yeah. you know, left wing people are right. Yeah. Yeah. And it just seems like the left is eating itself but at the same time still concentrating power in in legislation and then in it through unions at least so far as the uh uni four is concerned mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. scrambling for even more authorita 
authoritarian power while alienating everybody who doesn't get on board. So it just seems like a, a recipe for failure or disaster. Well, um, but if you can control the media, yeah, and you, you know, like, I mean, this is a program, obviously, um, if you can control the media, I mean, you know, they they may believe they can win. And, and right now, if you look at the polling numbers in Canada, I think this morning it was 38 liberal, 32 conservative, 14 NDP, 8 for the Green Party. Mm-hmm. So on paper, it looks like they've got a, you know, a doable lead. Parties have gone into federal elections up here with less of a lead than that and come out winning. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, you know, they know that, you know, they're seeing the same thing that, that, that I in that the polls are lying to you. Catherine Wynne went in, uh, I guess you know, like Doug Ford, the crack guy's brother got elected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay, this guy is fucking, he's famous because his brother was a crackhead. Yeah. They just elected him. And I mean, he's in person, he looks like a smarmy fucking, you wouldn't leave your kid alone with him. Yeah. Right? But they elected him because they hated this, uh, you know, Wynne was pushing the identity politics to the nuts. Yeah. She okay. herself was a, a openly gay woman. Yeah. Um. So it was a rejection of that, and we're going to see the same thing, and then we're going to get a bunch of people we don't want in power. Yeah. And yeah. If, if no one on the left, like I'm going to talk to the Green Party up here, and if they're willing to stand against this stuff, I think any, any you know, like... Alternative, yeah. Yeah, because a lot of people don't want to go right, but I mean, this is our kids, this is the future of our social fabric, these are redline mother-humping issues. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Right, so you know what? Yeah. I'll take the the big business and the rest of it. If if I think my kids safer, yeah. If I think there's less chance of my society fucking up, yeah, yeah. And we got it pretty good up here, yo. Yeah, so far it so is good. As shit, and we like it that way. <laughs> <laughs> and and as climate change keeps on going, you guys are just going to get warmer and warmer. So, uh, well, apparently, apparently, you got snow to burn. Yeah. Apparently. <laughs> sure, but we also got forests. Well, and that's the yeah. other thing. Yeah, it's, okay. It's, yeah. it's even interrupting the coherent response to that. What do you mean? The environmental so, issues. Because, again, organizing, you organize a climate group, well, now you got to deal with, oh, well, do we have this perspective and that perspective, and these voices need to be in audio. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, you know, like, I, people don't want to get to, you know, like up here, like I said, you used to go to a social thing, there was every kind of race, and nobody gave a shit. Yeah. Now people are fucking, you know, they're nervous, they're hesitant, because, you know, you, if I meet a person of color, I don't know if this person believes in their head that I'm racist by nature, and I'm taken from them. And I, yeah. You know, yeah. I didn't have to think about this shit before, because we didn't have the same history, you know, generally mm-hmm. up here. Mm-hmm. Um, What's the attraction of going down this path? It just it just seems like such short thinking if you actually believe in it that this is going that identity politics is going to lead to but somewhere. But the people good. pushing this don't actually believe that this leads to anywhere but uh, the Division. disruption of society. That's the whole point to it. It's not supposed to lead to the promised land. This is supposed to this. And if you look at gender theory, actually read what Butler wrote on gender theory. Mm-hmm. It's exactly what it says. We got to take out the capitalist heterarchy. Yeah. Right? And we yeah. do it this way. We multiply genders until gender's meaningless and this part this will disrupt some of the base concepts of society like family, marriage, yada yada yada. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um you look at ident- you go you you look at what they're actually saying in in race uh, anti-racist studies and stuff. And it's the same yeah. thing. We can't make any progress until we get rid of capitalism. Way to get rid of capitalism disrupts society. So we have to radicalize people of color. We have to we have to cause that friction. And then we will see. Like, I mean, when I was a soldier, I trained in counterinsurgent fucking warfare, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is essentially training to be an insurgent. And this is how you do it. This hmm. is how you do it. Well, for right? what because for what end? For perpetual chaos? Well, I, I mean, I don't know if they have an actual game plan. Probably okay. not. But, okay. I mean, most of these guys, they run around, they say, we're going to trash society. Um, there, there's one line on that uh, Montreal Counter Info says, we will dance in the smoke of the burning city or the light of the burning city. <laughs> okay. Right? This is childish okay. fever dreams, and that's who they're recruiting. I don't know if the people behind it have a plan. 
Yeah. But I mean, in Montreal, like some of these super black, and I knew these people, right? I'd been super, you know, I'd been out there with my camera, my little backpack, you know, getting arrested. Yeah. Yeah. Getting arrested, getting beaten, pepper sprayed, you name it. Um, you know, like I asked one of these guys directly and it's college educated and everything. I said, okay, so say you smash the system tomorrow. And I had known this from doing another story on food insecurity. Um, something like, uh, 18,000 trucks have to pass the bridges onto the island of Montreal every day to keep everybody fed. Okay. So that stops, you've got 48 hours with, with what's actually stored on the island. After that, you're done. There's no arable land on Montreal. There's no animals anywhere near Montreal. And they dump their raw sewage regularly into that river. So okay. drinking that, I don't know. So I asked this person, I said, okay, what, what do you do the next day? How do you make people's toilets flush? How do you get them water? How do you, not a fucking clue. Hmm. This is some, these are kids who have grown up like, you know, even at 50 years old, I remember when I, there were no bank machines, there were no computers, Yeah. you know, like, uh, these guys have grown up, so they just can't imagine that the world could be another way. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a very urban phenomenon. Kids out in the country, yeah. they're not going for this because they know what happens when the electricity goes off yeah yeah <laughs> exactly um, yeah so yeah huh. so i don't know if maybe the the professors and that maybe they have some kind of plan but they're not they're not sharing it yeah yeah it, it makes me think about all the uh, dystopian young adult novels and movies that came out over the last 10 years are now implanted in these kids brains now and so they're they're acting I mean, it out when I got to Occupy, yeah, the media, it's not, a, and I mean this, you know, if if there are some hands behind this, that would probably be part of it. Because hmm. when I got to Occupy even, right away there were people running around with these goddamn masks on, those Guy Fox masks. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, a lot. Well, you mm -hmm. still see it with Anonymous and that. I mean, yeah. it's a fucking movie. I said to one kid, I said, I, I fucking hope you're not down here because you watched a movie, genius. Because <laughs> that ain't got shit to do with reality. Huh. You know, and in re and, and none of them, the, the funniest part I found, they're all running around with these Guy Fox victory, we're going to fucking win the revolution. I'm like, do you know what Guy Fox was fighting for, yo? No, not a clue. He was fighting to keep ca fucking England Catholic. That's what Guy Fox was going to blow up the parliament for. It was a fucking conspiracy to get rid of King James, the yeah, Protestant king, and bring back a Catholic king. Yeah, yeah. That's what you're modeling yourself on. But you yeah. don't even know that. No, capitalism, it's capitalism, capitalism. capitalism. In China. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Shipped here on a boat and then on a truck. Sure, sure. I mean, to me, I think social media has had a big influence because if you look at what people do now, they don't want to do the long term work of organizing and marching and putting out letters and talking mm -hmm. to people. They basically want a virtue signal. Yeah. They want to get together with their friends, have a bunch of banners, get on the news, you know, and say what the fuck ever. And be right. And be right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. Thanks for cheering me up today. Oh, wait, yeah, I'm real cheerful. <laughs> well, no, nice to meet you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Interest and um, yeah, I'll direct people. Yeah. To, where where is your where are your articles going to be collected? Is there a website? A single uh, no, website? I have nowhere yet. That's one of the hard things because okay. I went looking for another host, right? Yeah. Other than Medium, like somewhere I could actually have a website hosted that's bulletproof. No. Yeah, because you got kicked off WordPress. No, I'm still there, but I'm not ever going to use it again. Okay. They because went they're... right into my article and edited it. So now do I have to go through every fucking... No, fuck you. Yeah. Um, so uh, in trying to find another host, the, the ones that I can find that seem like, you know, they'd be okay, they're populated by the Sieg Heil crowd, you yeah. know, or yeah. other dark web type shit. And I, okay. you know, yeah. so yeah. I think I found one finally called Orange something, but I got to check them out. Okay. Because it, you know, I can't. I don't want to be associated with that shit. It's, but that's where we're at. That's yeah. where we're at. If you want to speak your mind freely, you got to go the right. Yeah, yeah. You can't do it on the left. Yeah, yeah. And that's the danger. That's that's what's going to drive it all to the right. <sighs> Keep yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for coming on. Um, yeah. And I'll link. I'll link to your to your articles. They're great work.
Okay, well, thank you. And all what I'll do is I'll send you, if you're interested, I'll send you the Unifor information. Yeah, please Anything do. Anything else you would be interested in? Any, anything you think of. We'll, we'll keep in contact, and maybe I'll hit you yeah, up sure. uh, right. as my as my as I keep on digging. And I'll, okay, you I'll bet your buddy. Reference. All right, William. You have a great day. You too.